of what he came to do that Sunday morning. Had Jesus allowed his criticizers to cause him to lose his vision, cause him to lose and withdraw an answer from someone that had been calling out for 18 years, this sister would have lived the rest of her life grossly deformed, would have missed her miracle if Jesus would have allowed his critics, his criticism, cause him to lose focus, cause him to be distracted by the words of his criticizers. Our sister would go the rest of her life grossly deformed, living, depend, having to depend on whatever comes away for the rest of her life. Are you seeing it, church? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? I want you to see it. Now, this is where you and I, for the Holy Spirit has brought this out for you and I so that we, we can learn. Now, you have a ministry. We preached about ministry, effective ministry last night in Cochrane. Every one of you here has a ministry. Every one of you has a ministry. We cannot all be pastors. We cannot all be, we cannot all be preachers. We cannot all be deacons. We cannot all be um, secretary treasurers. We cannot, we cannot all have positions in the church. But somewhere, amen, and somehow, amen, God has placed a ministry in your life to contribute to the kingdom of God. Amen. And God knows what you can do. God sees inside of you. And God sees every one of you that only He can see you. You have potential that you haven't even birthed. Unborn dreams. You have ability that you haven't even brought out. Example is faith. But you, uh, maybe one or two years back, they, they couldn't even see this ability. And when they saw it, <laughs> it just blew it. How, how, how can she learn in such a short time? I mean, God sees something in you that nobody sees. And you have a ministry. But the point I'm making is when we're dealing with criticism, and having to live with criticism, I'm talking about Criticism that is evil. I'm talking about malicious criticism. I'm talking about criticism with a tongue, with an intention to hurt and to cripple and to, and, and, and to discourage and just, just to cut you up, amen, with a tongue. I'm talking about criticism that just, you know, it just comes with a look, amen. It, it just comes with an attitude, amen, that is so demeaning and, and, and you're such a downer. Everything that I do, amen, you, you, you're such a downer. Nothing I do ever pleases you. Nothing I do say looks positive to you. Nothing I do or say, amen, doesn't seem, amen, to shed any light on anything. Amen. It's just, amen, you, 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 you just um, deliberately, amen, just put everything down. I'm talking about somebody, amen, that just comes to you, amen, and just maliciously, amen, attacks you, amen, with their tongue, amen, and she's Nothing positive about everything that you were trying to do. And when Jesus healed the sister, when this Jesus healed this woman that had been coming for 18 years, I cannot believe that he would do this on a Sabbath. I just can't believe. He would do something like that. 
Can he turn around and talk to the people? He's still criticizing who is criticizing. Now he's planting criticism to the people. He says, <laughs> you know, the Bible says that six days a man ought to work. And then come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. And Jesus turned around and said, Are you a hypocrite? You mean to tell me that this woman can deny, be denied her blessing? This woman can be denied her miracle? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound all these 18 years, you mean to tell me that she, she doesn't have access and yet your ox and your donkey can have the pleasure of being watered on the Sabbath? What I'm trying to tell you is you as a person you as a woman of God and a man of God you're good at what you do and when you set out to do something when you set out to do something you see when this woman got healed had Jesus allowed his criticizers to shut him down. Had he allowed his criticizers to shut him down, the door of ministry would not have gotten to our sister nor anybody else that Sunday morning. Had he allowed his criticizers to shut him down, they wouldn't have only shut Jesus down, but they would have also shut the people that Jesus was going to minister to. What I'm saying is, when you allow your criticizers to shut you up, if you allow your criticisms to cause you to lose your focus. If you're, if the words of your criticizers, you allow that, you allow it to distract you, and you go into anger, and you go into tantrums, and you and you want to fight back. That's being distracted from the ministry that God has given you. So what's happening there is they're successfully distracting you. You're losing sight of what God wanted to do in your life. And when you when you allow your criticizers, amen, to be able to say things about you, amen, and to you, amen, you know, you're allowing that. You're stepping away. You're, you're, when you hear this criticism, you're stepping aside. You're, and you take more than one stride aside from what God wanted you to do that day because when they shut you down, then everyone that you seek to touch and minister to will be shut down as well. Am I going somewhere with you? Amen. Amen. So, when, you know, When people criticize you, they don't talk to you. They talk about you. When I, when, when I go to Sylvia, you know, Sylvia, you're, you're not going to help me at all talking about me. I mean, it's not going to help me at all when you talk about me. Nobody ever gets help when you when you when when people are talking about you. 
And I'm sure everyone here tonight, you've had people talking about you. In a critical, demeaning, downing kind of way. There is nothing constructive about people talking about you. You'll never help anybody talking about people as opposed to talking to the person. I think it's better to talk to the person. It's more, it's more constructive to talk to the person than just about the person. I mean, if you have concerns in the church, <laughs> sometimes we criticize who's in the church leadership. Sometimes we criticize who the song leader is. Sometimes we criticize. They, we, we got a whole list of more than these. <laughs> And the only thing we know is that we talk about, we talk about, we talk about, we talk about. Instead of coming and investing a risk of falling out with the pastor or somebody or Sylvia, eh, you know, I don't make the racist things. It would be more constructive to talk to her than just about her. Eh? And here, Jesus has just performed a miracle. And his critics aren't, they're, they're not happy with what he did. They're not, they don't support or they don't validate what he's just doing in the church. And I want to tell you tonight, you know, some of us in our families, in our relationships, with husband and wife, with our children, our families, special people in our life, sometimes we just let it right because we're afraid of what they might think or what they might do. Or, where, or what they might do to us if we just tell them the truth. There is that fear. I'm talking about the constructive critique. You need to critique each other. Amen? I'm not talking about the malicious kind of criticism. But you need to critique. Julie needs to critique John. John needs to critique Julie. Both of them needs to critique Faith. Little Juliana needs to critique Jojo. <laughs> Start early. We need to critique criticism that is constructive, that will cause you to come to a conclusion where you look at it, hey, there's some truth, there's some level of truth, there's some, there's some, there's, there's an ounce of truth in what they're saying to me. And you can use that to sharpen yourself. You can use that to enhance yourself, that you can excel beyond where you are at right now. You can use it to acquire greater heights of potential. A more powerful anointed ministry in your life that you can use either some level of truth in what they're saying to me. And you go back. You go back. Hey Donna, I just I just want to tell you today that I appreciate what you said to me the other day. I don't like what you said. <laughs> I I I had a couldn't sleep, I was tossing and turning all night over what you said to me, but I know in a loving way, in a concerned way as a sister, you did that and you took the investment at the risk of you falling out with me, but today Donna, I, 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 uh, I uh, thought it over amen, and there's some level of truth in what you said to me, and 
I appreciate that. I thank you for it. I, I just want to praise you for it. I appreciate you, Sister Don, because what you said to me the other day, I'm going to use it to sharpen myself. Amen. I'm going to use it to better myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. If that's you tonight, criticize me. <laughs> You know, there's some things too that we don't need to hear what we already know. Hey, we don't need we don't need people to tell us what we already know. I mean, I'm talking about just everyday things. When we first moved to Winnipeg because of Teresa's failing health condition, I first attended. A church, I don't know what it was called. This was before I attended Chief Cornerstone. It was another church I attended. Two weeks I attended there, all of a sudden I get a phone call in my house. And there's a sister at the end of the line. And she said to me, Brother Jerome, is this? Yeah, this is Brother Jerome. I don't know how you're going to take this. But I just want to tell you that you're so blind. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't need people to tell me what I already know. I mean, I know it. But at that time, I didn't realize it was the criticism behind it. I didn't know it then. I didn't know how to respond to it then. I didn't know if I knew then what I knew now, I'd have some words to say to her. <laughs> <laughs> Give God some friends. Give God some friends. That's right. This is not a message where you get all the hallelujahs and the praise of the Lord and the amen. This is not this kind of message. I wanted to just to visit with you, to encourage you, because there are potential ministries in this congregation. And don't allow your critics to shut you down. Because if they shut you down, then they will also shut down the people that would have benefited from your ministry. People that you seek to help. People that you seek to touch. People that you seek to bless. They will be shut down when you allow the voice of your critics to shut you down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can you go and sing a critical song? Yeah. 